Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to our live quilting chat, Tipsy Tuesday. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being with us on Facebook and YouTube. Yay! We're in both places and we have people everywhere so thanks for being with us if you're new around here make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're on youtube and of course the like button on facebook and if you're on facebook make sure you're in our group our community group goodrun's quilt crew where all the fun happens so uh of course we want to keep commenting throughout the show we have a giveaway question at the end but we also reward a live um, commenter so randomly from all your comments we have a giveaway at the end and a $25 gift card is up for grabs for um, a random comment that made the cut so keep watching keep watching through the whole show you're tonight still huh you're, you're still in jail ain't you I'm still in jail yes say hi to mr. HP he's hi, not hi. in jail so we can get in the back door I'm not in jail. <laughs> So if you see him commenting or posting in the crew, it might be me. Might be. Not all the time, but it might be. All right. So uh, on today's, tonight's show, we will finish our strip tease, strip along event with the final parts, putting it all together, assembling the blocks. And I'm going to give you some tips, uh, how I do things with the best efficiency and the easiest way to get everything to match up nicely. And I do have a, quite a bit of uh, new fabrics and some new projects to share with you tonight. But we will start with our giveaway from last week. I asked you a question at the end of the show and um, all of you who answered got entered into the giveaway. I asked you, does anyone else in your family quilt? And our winner is Susan Fenton. And she said, my sister-in-law and I quilt sometimes together. We live in different time zones, but we quilt together several times a year. That's beautiful. Now, I did talk about that nobody really in my family quilts, but I have gotten some people into it. So I think that that counts. That counts, doesn't it? Sure. They're not like full-on quilters yet, but, you know, they're getting there. I've inspired people. So that's great. All right, so let's start with the quilts behind me. Of course, I have a finished top. It's just a top. This is the strip tees you made with the C and Me fabric bundle. So three colors. So I broke them down and did three rows of each color and kind of mixed it up within each um, color, you know, row. So I mixed it up with fabrics. I wasn't thinking about too much about matching. I used the canvas peacock fabric for my accent and it just turned out gorgeous. So I can't wait to quilt it up. Eh, I don't know quite yet. Maybe some waves, maybe find some seashells. Something like that will be cool. All right, so then in the corner, we have a little sneak peek. Yes, I did show you a sneak peek of these blocks when they were being made, but here's the quilt. This is Kimberly, she will be in our in my new book coming out later this summer, but um, I just love it in the Tulip Tango. So I used the Tulip Tango bundle um, to make this quilt and another quilt that's in the book as well. And I did use, so the whole bundle, Tulip Tango, I uh, used 10 inch squares for Kimberly and then I cut the rest into strips and I used that too for another quilt. I used the um, Thatch Dotty in the shadow color for my binding and I kind of folded it up I'll show you on this side kind of folded it up to show you what I used for the back that tulip tango on the light background that we have in three yards I love this backing it's so pretty such a perfect quilt for this time of year tulips well tulips probably done for many of you um, but I just love these fabrics. They are so gorgeous, so classic, of course. Robin Pickens is always our favorite, one of our favorites. So they always sell out fast. So that is um, on the cabinet. We have a brand new bag. So I wanted to talk about, we made some bags 
um, to kind of celebrate this new season we're entering into here in Minnesota. I told you, it like went from winter to summer. There was barely a spring. It's um, hot again today. So it's, yeah, still, what is it, 77 degrees outside. We had some storms yesterday. It was hot, the stormy, but now it was, it's beautiful outside. Really, really great. So that means for us, it's boating season coming up. Boating season. And so the dock is in, the lift is going in, and hopefully, Mr. HP, right, the boat will be on the water. Sometime, hopefully, In next a week. day or two or a few days. Yeah. Crossing fingers. So we made this um, strip to the beach bag. So here's what the pattern looks like. So it is a quilt as you go bag um, pattern that was in like my first Fast and Furious book that's sold out, out of print. Uh, but I republished the, the single pattern, the bag. So there's two sizes of the bag. You can use the strips um, for the two and a half inch strips for the bag in the back, the bigger bag, which is 16 by 16 by eight. And then the one in front is a smaller, smaller, similar, similarly how we make it. But I wanted to show you this one. Um, this one we used the, uh, oh, what's the name of the bundle? Reef Life. Just awesome, isn't it? So anybody going to the beach or boating, this is just perfect. So instead of two strips here, um, so Karen made this bag. She's such an awesome bag maker. And so she cut a little bit wider strips. So just cut a four and a half to replace two strips to see more of this whale fabric. And then um, she did a little different. So I wanted to show you, these bags are so easy to make and they're easy really to adjust. So if you wanted to make kind of a taller bag, all you gotta do is do the cutouts in the corners to make the box corner just a little bit smaller. So she made the box smaller so usually it's six inches wide, but this is only about, I would say barely four. So that makes the bag so much taller, deeper, you fit more stuff in it. And then she just added a cute little pocket in here. Let me show you. So there's a pocket in here that you can put your phone, your keys, everything. So you don't have to look to all the way to the bottom. So such a great bag. And this one is just made out of, with batting inside. So it can easily fold up and be stored and then load it up with towels or whatever else when you're ready to go boating. It's a great, great size. Um, and guess what? This one will be used. Now the other one, of course, it is also fishing opener next weekend here in Minnesota. So, um, well, I've got to show you the bundle. So this bundle is Reef Life. So it's six pieces, tropical fish. So you can make this whole bag out of six pieces. I, I don't know if you notice, but the lining is usually what you need more of, but you can just piece it. So we use two fabrics. Oh, <laughs> there it is. So you see in the bottom, we use two fabrics for the lining. It's hard to show. We gotta show the overhead. Can you show the overhead? That would be easier. Here it is, <laughs> much easier. So we just pieced the lining and that just makes for a fun surprise in the bottom, doesn't it? So Reef Life. Uh, this one you could. So I want to show you, I want to talk about that. So Reef Life is six pieces. And like I said, there was a bit of leftover. And so we were still able to do it. Now the bag fell. Can you <laughs> hand it to me? <laughs> so the other bag I wanted to show you is we made the summer um, summer reading book bag, which is, of course, doesn't have to be a book bag and be any for anything. And in this case, we made it also for the boat, for fishing. Um, perfect. And we did some adjustments. So we used for the bottom, bottom part. So this is actually, so two pieces of fabric, if you um, have made this bag before. So this is part of our Fast and Furious Club April project. You can purchase it individually if you're not in Fast and Furious Club and just get um, th the pattern and the video class, me showing you how to do it. And so we used the heat and bond liquid vinyl that we carry in the store to coat the bot, just the bottom fabric. The, fa the other fabrics are fine. So just the bottom so you can set it down so it's water repellent. Um, we did two coats. So how, how you have to do it, you have to 
paint it on, let it dry for I think 30 minutes, and then you have to pre iron it with um, uh, with some parchment paper, and then you paint do it again, and then uh, sew it. It's a little bit sticky to sew, just like if you were using coated fabrics. But then we used also instead of batting, we used the soft and stable, the foam, and look how great it stands up. You can just, I swear, there's, you can fit a 12 pack of beer in here, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, and some other things. And of course, this one has the pockets on both sides, on the outside, so you don't have to go digging inside. Um, and I just think it's really great. Of course, you could coat all the fabrics. It might be a little bit tougher to sew. Now, we did French seam uh, all the seams, just like the pattern says. And um, I would say only if your machine can handle that, uh, do that. But you can also just do one seam and either zigzag, or if you have a serger, you can serge it too. Serge the seams. Such an easy, fast bag to make, and what a great gift for, you know, Father's Day or anything, anything, anybody that's going boating or fishing or anywhere this summer. So this one we use the Keep It Real bundle and Keep It Real, the fishing one, that's only five fabrics. So just one bundle made the whole bag because the lining, again, we used two fabrics to piece it, piece the lining, and then um, just kind of played with the placement of the other ones. I just love um, all the lures and the handles and stuff. So I think it turned out awesome. So keep it real and reef life fun fun bags and now we're seeing other bundles that will be fun to make bags um, for all kinds of occasions and of course I don't love making bags so I just have the ideas there's a question right there <laughs> so could you coat the fabric after you've already created the bag I have not tried it because the instructions tell say that you have to iron it to kind of heat set it so I don't know how that's gonna work but there are sprays other than the and I'm just talking about the liquid liquid uh, vinyl but there are other sprays that are used for like outdoor fabrics. Um, so you can check some of those and, and try those. There's other, pro other products out there. But um, I probably would not use the liquid vinyl because you have to heat set it. I wouldn't want it to be sticky after I'd sewn the bag, all the way, done all the work. All right. Um, any other questions about the bags? Love to make bags, uh, yeah, I wish I loved it uh, <laughs> because I love to have them, but I don't, I don't love it. So I think we might, I might need to make one grab and go, the big tote, because that one is great just to load up with towels and, um, you know, uh, life jackets, anything you need kind of big and bulky to kind of lug down to the boat. So, um... Yeah, we have it in stock, and if we run out, just sign up for notifications. We get it back in all the time. All the time. Um, okay, so um, did I say everything I wanted to say about the bags? Yes, I did. Oh, speaking of some fresh things for summer, um, my quilt that was on the cover of the Saga pattern, so my new pa newest pattern, single pattern is Saga, which came out last year. I made this gigantic quilt that's on the cover of um, the pattern and I've always wanted to see what it would look like on a bed because it's a queen size quilt. And so our photographer Andrea took it, um, brought it over, brought the quilt over and put it on our bed and fo was photographing it on the bed. And it just looked so awesome on there that um, we decided for now, it's staying on the bed. <laughs> Something nice and fresh for summer. I love it. So this is made from Through the Woods bundle. Really love that fabric line. And um, it's a queen size. Yes, queen size. And the, the quilting pattern, oh, I was so going to remember it. Um, I don't remember it. I wrote it down somewhere. Is it on your s script? I think I wrote it. No, I wrote it somewhere, <laughs> but um, uh, it's, uh, it's a really cool one. I'll have to tell you guys the name when we post some more photos with the fabric. But of course, um, 
the most exciting thing going on these past few days is seeing all of your wonderful striptease quilts being born. So last week eh, during the strip along, I taught you how to make block two. And of course there's two versions because we have version one and version two of the quilt in one pattern. So they are all kind of coming together, each one with their own personality. And so here uh, we put together a slideshow of your progress for this part two. So some of you have already finished, some, very few already quilted, but a lot of just blocks ready. And so, you know, trickle that in here and there, but let's check out all of your progress for, for uh, the strip along part two.
There it is. And we are ready for our part three of the quilt along, of the strip along for our strip tees. This is our sixth annual strip along, and I can't believe we're, this is the last part, but it's the fun part. It's putting it all together. So, um, of course, you, when we're assembling quilts just in regular rows, we all have our little quirks and routines to do things. And um, I'm not one to say that mine is the correct one. Just like I've always said, I'm only giving you tips. Take them or leave them. Sometimes people love them and sometimes people just like to do it the way they do it. And that's all good. It's your quilt. I never talk about, you know, you need to, these things need to match there and you need to do it in this order because at the end of the day, you're taking your quilt home and um, that's all there is to it. You would get to decide how you do it and what it looks like. So with that being said, here were my uh, rows. Actually, if you look at, can you look at the camera and you can see the quilt? Um, my blocks, half of them are sewn together into rows, but they're right there on the wall behind Mr. HP. <laughs> right there. Uh, so I have a few of the bottom rows sewn together, but I wanted to show you how I assemble things. So this quilt is done in horizontal rows assembled. Um, I, I actually recommend doing it in horizontal rows. And so when I have all my quilt laid out how I want it, and of course I've talked about this before, I always take a photo um, just to be able to look at it on a smaller scale because when you are standing right next to it, there are some things that you don't see. Like, you know, kind of spreading the colors out if you're doing a scrappy quilt. And sometimes maybe you notice something is turned, especially the block ones, you know, you're gonna make sure that they're not turned the wrong way. And so once you have it all laid out, you look at it on your phone. If you're doing really just scrappy, I always check it in black and white too, just to see the value of the colors if they're nicely spread out. After that, I start assembling the blocks into rows. So again, horizontal rows. So I always start when I have them laid out on my wall, I start in the top right corner and I pick up my blocks from right to left and I stack them up. So look at them here. I have a stack of one of my, of my top row. So I took the first top right block and I stacked them on top of each other as they are. Before I start doing anything, I put a little pin on uh, this is my right side, the edge of the quilt. Now, of course, because I color block my rows, it's easy to figure out which block is on each end. But with other quilts, I always put a pin facing this way on, on the end block and then the other end uh, on the bottom one, so which is on the other end of the row. So then I take this stack to my sewing machine. And this is easiest for me to show you this way. So pretend my sewing machine is right here. I start with this stack and I bring the first block over. I bring the next block over and then this one gets sewn here. So I flip it over and then I feed this through my sewing machine. So this goes to the sewing machine first. Then I go to the next one and go sew two and two together and I'm chain piecing. So these stick together. Keep going. Now I feed through and then I have uh, an odd number of blocks in my row. So there's one left and that one just stays there. So I feed this through. Now I can clip from behind and take my first set of blocks, open them up and I have my little pin. So I know what's this next um, on the end. Then I take the next pair, I flip that open and now I can sew this pair to here, feed it to, through, and then repeat with the uh, next pair. Now, I've talked about this before, and you also know that I like to have a leader and ender whenever I'm doing something. So in this case, once I have two, uh, four blocks together and then four blocks together, I would take a leader and ender and feed it through, so I can then sew these two together and then finish with adding my last block on the end. So then I pop another leader and ender through and I have a whole row finished. I can bring that up to my um, ironing board and press. So as far as pressing these rows, 
I talked a little bit about this when uh, we were doing the step before, when we were doing the block twos, um, that we want to always press towards if there's a single fabric sewn to a fabric with a lot of seams or a piece of fabric with a lot of seams or a unit with a seams, we want to press towards the single fabric for less bulk. And in this case, we always want to press towards block two. And that is um, the reason because we want to lessen the bulk and then also because there are we want to make sure that we match these corners by pressing towards block two. We're always going to see those, uh, see where, where that seam needs to land. So I'm going to move these out of the way. And now that we have the rows and we have them pressed, so I can explain that a little bit better. So I have my whole row here. I usually take the top row, I flip it onto the bottom row. And now I'm ready to sew this one to get these two together. So when I have rows, then I like to do twos, 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 assemble into fours, 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 and then I'm finishing by just joining the last seam on my quilt top, but I have two big pieces. Instead of always just adding a skinny row to a really big piece, it's so much harder. So always break it down like that. Now for this particular quilt, what we want to do here is we want to match up, I'm going to open this up, we want to match up these seams here. So we have a seam allowance on both sides and we kind of want to match this little point to this little point, of course, when the, when the quilt is done. So quick way to do that. And this is again where it depends, you know, how finicky are you? If you are a little bit persnickety about your seams, then uh, by all means, put some work into pinning and figuring out. So an easy way to do that, I, you can take a pin and pin right through the intersection. So right through where these two seams meet, I'm gonna pin right through the intersection. And that means that I should be right on top of my point here on the other side. So I'll show you right here. If I can, right on top of my white point here. So then I take that same pin and I can pin it right to the top of this point, like this. And if I hold it just straight through, like this, this um, is the way they should be exactly matched. Now I, I leave that pin in and I take another one to actually pin these two, this intersection together, like this. Now, if you're more seasoned quilter, you can also just eyeball it, match up your little points, put them together, feel everything nesting, and put the pin in it. Again, depends on your level of um, particular, particularity or persnickettiness, okay? And it's all good, we all have our own. So just remember it's your quilt, um, there's no police. So now we're going to sew the rows together. Now, if you feel like there is bulk, I um, don't think that this was going to create that much bulk because we only have these blocks every other. So you can press the seams all in the same direction. If you feel like there's too much bulk, you can also press the seams between the rows open. Um, but I really do avoid that unless there's a lot of seams coming together. And in this case, I don't think it's that bad. So I would just press them in one direction. And that is it. There you have your whole quilt assembled. Gorgeous, so, gorgeous. Do we have questions, Mr. HP? Do you have questions on anything? <laughs> Can you do that again? Oh boy. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> No, you can watch the show again, Mr. HP. You Here's can just rewatch. What, what level of OCD? Well, yeah, I, we don't like to, you know, call it out like that, but you know, it's, it's all good. Some people enjoy having things all match up. Other people's, you know, doesn't bother them that, that much. And um, it's all good. It's your quilt. Leave it be. That's how, and whenever I teach classes, um, if I get asked, should I, should I rip this out and redo it? I always leave it to the people. I said, is, is it going to bother you? If they say no, leave it. If they say yes, people. I'd say then you're never going to be happy with it. Then I would redo it. There's a few persnickety people I see. That's all right. It's all good. 
I can be persnickety on certain things, <laughs> believe me. But other things, when they don't matter in the end, not so much. All right, so um, somebody added a comment about that quilting design on my sire quilt. It is called Swirly Gig. It's called Swirly Gig 1. And I kind of made, um, positioned it so the big swirls were over the four blocks together. And it kind of worked out. It was one of our first, uh, one of the first times I was quilting a really big quilt. So it was, yeah. <laughs> I probably want to do, do things a little differently now. But it worked out great. Loved it. And by the way, speaking of, you know, what I was talking about, I always need to have a leader and ender. And I didn't really have one when I was assembling the, starting to assemble a block. So I'm, I was like, I need something. I need something. So guess what I did? I, I found this, I found two of these layer cakes. Found. I found them just in my collection. Like they were a total surprise. <laughs> I found two of these layer cakes. I don't know if they're from last year. Called Hollyberry Coriolis Christmas fabric. So I was like, okay, let me just chop these up into something. And of course, what's going to be a quick one that I had right on my desk was the Kimberly quilt because I had just been finished writing it and was testing it and um, there it was. So I know that's going to be one of those quilts that's going to be a go-to quilt for people. So look at these cute blocks that they're coming um, as my leader and enders as I piece my, my strip tees together. So fun stuff. Have you gotten the gotten um, the hang of having a leader and ender going all the time? Love to hear that. Love to hear that because it just all of a sudden you have that second project half done. Okay, so um, no more questions, huh? No more questions. Nope. I wanted to announce the um, the winners for the part two giveaway. So. We have, of course, a giveaway both on Instagram and on our Facebook in the, in the crew. So our Instagram winner for part two is, um, can you put up that little uh, image? This little, with the names of them? Oh, you didn't put that in there. Um, so Instagram winner is Susan Jan Janke. Um, her Instagram handle is Susan's B quilting. Susan's been quilting. Susan's been quilting. So um, her photos are, should have been in there too. And then our Facebook winner is Susie Hammond's Lost and Now. So Susie Hammond uh, also had a photo. So congratulations both of you. Again, we will ship all prizes after the whole thing is over, which means now you can post our Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, we have their we have their quilts, right? Mm -hmm. We have Susan's. We ha it's Susan and Susie. How funny is this? Okay, so this is Susan's from Instagram. I love the way she did different colors for the accent for the strips through. Isn't that cool? That's a great idea. Great idea. Um, and then played with the colors as well on the um, on block two. Very cool. And then we have Susie's doing a little red, white, and blue fun stuff. Really cool. And she's doing version one. Very cool. So congratulations. Uh, we will get you your prizes. So now you can um, post your progress. Of course, it doesn't have to be a fully finished quilt, just your progress. You have until next Tipsy Tuesday to post and for Instagram, we will use the same two hashtags. It's hashtag, stri hashtag striptease quilt and then also you have to have both strip, um, strip along 2022 and make sure you tag us in it and follow our page and everything. There's going to be, you know, you can see in the post all the rules and then for the crew, our hashtag will be strip along 2022 part three, all one word. All right, so Mary Ellen is asking, what is a leader and ender? So I've been talking about this since, I don't know, two summers ago. So I like to always have like a second project going on when I'm working on a main project. So a leader and ender is, um, you know, pieces that you piece when you're doing your, your uh, chain piecing. 
And instead of just clipping the threads at the end of the stack that you're chain piecing or having a little scrap that you sew through for the threads, I usually have some piece of another project that I feed through the machine to save thread and then um, because you're not pulling threads and, and wasting thread. So you kind of really working on the second quilt while you're working on the first one. So this is usually how I work. I'm working on one and then another one becomes my leader and ender. So it goes through, we call it leader and ender because it goes through at the end and then it, it's um, going through to begin with. So then I take my leader ender project, it becomes my main and another project moves in to become my leader ender. Yeah, but now I didn't have one so I had to just make one up. Because <laughs> um, I, I, you kind of get so addicted to it. It's weird to have to clip threads for me. It's weird. It's odd. Yeah, a little weird that way. Um, okay, so we got our winners and make sure you post post um, for the giveaway for part three. We will announce the winners next week for uh, Tipsy Tuesday. And then I can't wait to see all your finished quilts. We'll probably wait a little bit for the final um, slideshow when we have more finished quilts because it's always fun to see and you go outside and take some great photos outside. Um, okay, so I wanted to talk about, since we don't have any questions, no questions about the strip along, huh? Nope. Sandy's asking, did you do a leader and ender class? No, I've just, I think I've talked about it in a lot of our sew alongs or quilt alongs. Um, and I, I don't remember which one I did for the first time, but I just, I've always done this. Um, if you follow Bonnie Hunter, she does this too. You know, it's just, and she kind of came up with the term leader and ender. And it can be something as simple as you can just be making like four patches from your scraps. It could be something you're working on from your scraps, um, strip sets or something like that. Uh, that's what I did this last time. I was just running strip sets through after, uh, as I was making the strip tease blocks. So then that, one, that quilt got finished. All right, so we are um, moving, moving, moving on our Christmas in Europe. Sunday is block number nine that goes live this coming Sunday. So it's getting closer and closer to the finish, but I think you all are a little bit confused on how it's going to look in the end, is, aren't you? Are you getting any ideas on how the finished look will be? Because the blocks are all different sizes, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. That's what's fun about the mystery. You don't really know or have any idea, even as close to the end as we are now. And you're gonna be, you're gonna be surprised all the way to the end, pretty much. So I'm excited, excited about that. Gotta wait till Sunday. But um, we have, how many of you are doing the Christmas in Europe and are starting to try and guess what it's gonna look like? Um, Somebody said they haven't even started. That's okay. It's okay. You can always catch up. That's, or just do it later. Do it whenever you got time. It's not going to go away anywhere. It's not going to be uh, run away from you. But we have some great fabrics. Uh, we got some great one yards that I wanted to start with. Uh, we have some basics. These are from a line called Merrymaking from Moda. We, we have some pre-cuts coming, but I also ordered these one yards because this is just such a fabulous basic. It has just speckles of a little bit of um, silver metallic, so I think this would be just fabulous for some beautiful uh, holiday projects, working it in with all kinds of other things, some really fun color names. So it's called Merrymaking, Evergreen Candy Cane, eggnog, winter night, and vintage blue. So these are all brand new. Then we have um, a really cool quilt. It's called Map Route, route uh, Route 66. So it's Route 66 kind of a uh, map. Very cool, low volume background. So I love this kind of a collage with a little map. Um, this will be cool for a bag, using some of our car fabrics. Oh yes, great for Father's Day, for road trips. What are you doing over here? 
No, we're not doing this yet. Are you asking about this? Are you asking about this? This? I was trying to sneak it. Uh-uh. This is not happening until next Friday. Till Friday. Sneak. Oh, then there's another awesome print. This is called Thank You Words. So these are thank yous in all kinds of different languages. And I love the rainbow look. So there is a tuck, um, but unfortunately it is the Scandinavian version. It's a Swedish, uh, Norwegian version spelling because in Icelandic we have two Ks, tuck. But that's okay. We're a small country, so I will give it a pass because I absolutely love this. I really love this. So great one for gifts, international, anything. Just a really cool typography print. Is it 66 to 3 yards? Um, I don't think so. I think it's only once. I'm not 100% sure, sure, though. I asked if Route 66 is in 3 yards. I just, yeah, yes. No, the people didn't hear you. Oh, the oh they didn't hear you. Okay, then we have these really cute gnomes. So these, this line was just a small line, so not big enough to put into a bundle, but I just loved the colors and these cutesy little gnomes. They're skating and skiing. Um, so these taupe and then there's the dark. So this is uh, of them kind of skiing and playing. And then here they're just tossed. And then we have the plaid that goes kind of with them. So, uh, or matches really great. So I think these would be really great, you know, pillowcases, they'd be great aprons or any kind of projects. Thank you, Bex, too. And a, a fun little plaid. And of course, you could do a fabric pull from basics um, to match these and make a quilt. It'll be gorgeous. Really fun. Nomi gnomes. So these are all in one yard. And like I said, I don't remember if we have the root 66 in three yards. But just um, remember to use that search bar on the website. It's the best. I use it multiple times a day myself. So check it out and it'll pull everything up, whether it's, it, it will even pull up the blog posts when we do the fabric pulls. So here we have a couple of new bundles I want to share with you. The first one is called Workshop. This was on our pre-order and this is, I would call this a basics bundle because I, it's kind of a rainbow. It's by Libs Elliott from Figo Fabrics. So really cool, kind of a modern texture on it. It has almost, um, like a canvasy texture, uh, burlapy, um, and just really cool prints. So, and the colors are really, really nice. So, 12 pieces that really would just go well in with anything. So, of course, they would look great in a quilt. This would make a really great rainbow uh, strip tease. But just all kinds of different textures, geometrics and a rainbow of, of colors. So I love uh, bundles like this because they can just become builders in your, um, in your stash or in your collection, just like the Color Club is. So we have this beautiful deep purple or deep plum with a little lavender undertone here. We have the red with the pink of a magenta color and this is just the texture and then we have the beautiful warm red and coral and we have a gold and the stripe and then the texture just textured solid so these are the 12 pieces beautiful rainbow and I was kind of like at first not sure what to do with it, thinking maybe pull bundles for it. But then I decided it would be cool to, to pull one yards that we have that match the colors identically. So that was kind of fun. So we start on this end with Bumbleberry's Custard. So you could always kind of pull something in that works with it. And then uh, the seeds and the tangerine. We have the coral color, the Deco Stitch Desert Rose. We'll kind of stagger them so we can fit them all in here. The warm red, um, the chalk and charcoal in the red even matches the texture. Love that. We have this one, the impressions in the more pink. This is from Color Club from our February. 
And then in the darker would be the nature elements in the raspberry tart. For the lavender undertone, I did the floor elements in the lavender haze because it has dark in it too. For the plum, the quilter's linen and the amethyst, also from our color club. For the aqua tone, the dot matrix and the aqua, perfect mix with also got the, the darks in there. For the teal, the deco stitch, one of the new colors, the abyss, the dark teal, and I love that it has the light in there too. Then we have moonscape marlin for the darker blue and flow in the indigo for the lighter blue. So isn't this fun? Like perfect matches. This was really fun to do in the warehouse. So uh, just, yeah, this is my favorite. <laughs> this was my favorite. I had really a lot of fun with this. And I could have came up with more, but this is just such a great, a great way to show you how you can easily, you know, substitute, um, enhance whatever fabric line if you have a really great inventory of some good basics with different textures and things. It'll make something, uh, a basic bundle like this, really interesting. All right, so this is Workshop. Now, if you pre-ordered Workshop, it's probably on its way to you already. And remember our pre-orders, you get a discount if you pre-order um, from now that we, when the fabric is in stock, it goes to back to its regular price. So check that out if you're looking at some of our pre-orders. We're always adding more. Um, we have a new batch coming here real soon. All right, so Workshop in the house. Then we have another beautiful line from Northcott. This is by um, Patrick Lowe's. Beautiful, it's called Sanctuary. And we're starting with this main print of beautiful roses and butterflies on a kind of a almost um, textile almost like a wallpaper or textile background. So really love this color combination with um, this kind of corally uh, red color with the turquoise and then beautiful deep olive green. So we have a butterfly print here. I really love his textures. He always has really great textures. Here's another great texture. Just a tone on tone in that color. Then we go a little bit deeper, teal, another great texture here. You know, it's just when you have textured fabrics and it's not just like a solid background and um, with motifs on it, it just gives it so much dimension. Um, so we have the darkest teal here. Then we have a great stripe in there that kind of ties together all the colors, the um, turquoise, the green, and the red. And we have the coral colored with the butterflies, um, the tone on tone. Again, a darker version of the red here with this, this print. And then we have the greens, beautiful olive green. And um, finishing it off with one light fabric in there that ties all the colors together. So this really nice um, cream, uh, ivory cream with all the colors, the greens, the teals, the aquas, and the reds. So this is Sanctuary. I did do a fabric pull, so let me start by matching. If you wanted to add some basics that match this tone, it's a little bit of an antique white, so the canvas in the antique white is a great match or a uh, pebbled path in the ivory. It's the perfect match for the base color. And I love just the little texture of the gray dots on it. So these would be great. For the greens, this worn crock by you has um, same type of texture and I love the texture match because the color match is great too. And then if you wanted something more subtle, the mix and the olive also is the same tone of green. So as far as the reds, I went with one darker. So the chalkboard texture red also, cause it's very textured, lots of different hues in here. 
that matches the, all the textures in the fabric. And then I did the seeds in the watermelon, has a little bit of light in there that really plays well with these um, butterflies. And then as far as the teals, the darker teals, I love the nature elements and the seawater because it has the light tones in it too. And then the canvas turquoise is a perfect match for the teal colors. Uh, I know there is a stripe in here, but if you wanted more of it or something different, I love this with it, the stripe in the papillion. Even though it does not have the teal in it, but it has this perfect red, um, has a green, and then these beautiful grays that kind of modernize it up a little bit. So this is Sanctuary by Patrick, uh, Patrick Lowe's. Really beautiful. This will be, make a, a gorgeous quilt. Gorgeous, gorgeous. All right. I hope you've been good about commenting throughout because it's time for our live winner. Time for Mr. HP to stir up the random generator. Comment picker. So who's our winner tonight? Here it goes. Joanne Totes. Congratulations, Joanne. You have won a $25 gift card. So all you have to do is send us an email to help at gequiltdesigns.com and we will get you that gift card right away to get to go shopping instantly. Digital, digital gift cards, yes. Um, totally an enabler. I'm such an enabler, you guys. So uh, I love all the striptease quilts that are being made from your collections and a lot of you are saying I'm only using stash and so here's here's your uh okay I'm gonna be your enabler now if you were able to make a whole quilt only from your stash yes I'm gonna allow you to buy some fabric buy some fabric <laughs> if as if you needed an enabler I never need an enabler. I just get it if I want it. All right, so uh, another chance to win, of course, is answering our giveaway question. So I love that um, we have these different options of kits and bundles and stuff like that. So I love to hear your answer to this question. Do you like kits? or to pick your own fabrics because I know that is uh, very much either or. Of course, you might love kits or you might love to pick your own or you might be in the middle. Maybe you just like the coordinated bundles but you can still kind of make whatever quilt you want. So it's not quite a kit, but it's coordinated. So you really don't have to work too hard on picking. So. Love to hear your answer on that. And of course, we will pick a winner from your answers randomly next week and announce it on our Tipsy Tuesday next week, which will be May 17th. May 17th, 7 p.m. Central. And then, of course, we will be live this coming Friday. That is Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Mm. May 13th at 3 p.m is our show this Friday. So I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, make sure you post your updates for your striptease quilts. Can't wait to see them all. We will see you this coming Friday. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.